Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays, The Binding of Isaac Atterith, plus the quest for the blue boy, blue large man, maybe you've heard of him. Mmm, cyan big boy, 4Z4M2FPL. Yo, rate of fire, great, speed, decent, luck above zero, can't complain. Red candle and a decent amount of HP. A level with you, we could use a little bit more gas in the, uh... Damage department and look at that already sorted for us. This is like an actual Probably like a 9 out of 10 start. Okay, we have doctor's remote <laughs> So every time I What is this room dude get me out of here. I don't want to see it. Um every time I Press the space bar. I'm gonna teleport myself this is both awesome and horrible. Because we can choose when to use it. The problem is, of course, you know, we, we love our spacebar item. So we do want to use it. You know what? I got a good feeling about this one right here. Didn't get anything. Turns out, you know, good feelings, they can lie to you, I suppose. This room is acceptable. I got no problem with this room. The other room is horrendous. Please remove that room from your lexicon game. I choose... Not to go to it. Take me to the boss room instead. I like having teleport, but I'll level with you. It's gonna stink not being able to use red candle. So the thing is, like, I'm gonna hold the item for now. And, wow. This room is horrible, dude. On boss fights, for example, we may want to enter the room, drop the trinket, or drop the trinket but when we kill the room just before the boss room. Uh, fight the boss with red candle, go back and grab it, and then, like, the thing is, this run is so good that it, it doesn't really matter if, uh, oh no. Uh, this run is so good that it doesn't really matter on most rooms, except for this room, which is, like, straight out of Diablo's Inferno. If we have red candle, you know we're gonna be happy either way, is what I'm trying to get at, with our 7 rate of fire and our 5.23 damage. And a spirit heart, which I'm embarrassed to admit I absolutely actually need wasn't performing up to my best there. This whole floor is just enormous rooms. But I gotta, I gotta turn off my inner complainer. Because, I mean, like, look at this. The stats are out of control right off the bat. These are like, you know, depths stats. And yet, here we are. Do we look like we're on the depths? I don't think so, buddy. Okay, so get rid of Doctor's Remote. Bought us a lot of time. That being said, here's I'm gonna I'm gonna keep myself honest on this one. We're gonna take Doctor's Remote, even though it's deliberately bad. I'm gonna take a sip of this coffee as loudly as possible, and then uh, we're gonna use it. Like that's kind of what I was hoping for, right there. To be honest with you, it was a good opportunity to use this, and and teleporting is actually a big positive for us in most situations. You know, we can go to a a curse room for half price. We can even teleport into the curse room and then. Theoretically teleport out of the curse room because the space bar item recharges so quickly so having unlimited teleports is a huge Boon for us to be honest with you Luck downgrade All right, you know if you if you gotta you gotta Thank God we can actually see the map now. I'm like way less tilted even though the deal with the devil turned out to be trash way less tilted my thinking right now is, dude, we got the best of all worlds. You know, we don't rely on Red Candle to do damage, but on some rooms it'll do some good stuff for us. Um, what we want to do is, like, teleport after you finish these rooms. The idea being, look at that. First off, there's the secret room. If you'll allow me, I'm just going to... Oh, that's so good. I'm just going to come over here, though, and dust you, which will also teleport me. But it, it didn't kill you? Okay, I, I have no idea then what happened. Um, I'm trying to teleport into special areas. That's my that's my go-to here, which is why I'm actually not going to spend a key to go into our item room. Because I should be able to just press the space bar and go there kind of naturally, you know what I mean? Especially okay, there's second secret room, so I already love that. Although we could have gone to it anyway.
This is what I mean when I, you're probably thinking, and, and you would in all likelihood be very correct to think, you know, NL, you're being an idiot. Why don't you just uh, actually walk into the rooms? And you, you got a very good point, okay? But this is an unusual situation that doesn't happen all that often, so I'm trying to take advantage of it while it lasts here. I'm thinking like another five or six teleports. One, two. Oh, there we go. So we're inside of the shop now. Uh, I think we'll totally take the stopwatch, which we cannot afford. <laughs> Keep it up. Keep it up. There we go. I'm fine with Aura. All right, let's get the heck out of town. All that, we saved two keys. We're still ahead of schedule. Rate of fire is crazy thanks to Aura. Dude, this is a brand new way to approach a run. This is what I look for. This late in my Isaac career, you know, I, I'm looking for... Uh... Oh, no, I've done it again. I'm looking for things that are, uh, you know, on the fun side. I'm looking for novelty. And we have received novelty here. So just don't take damage. What I want to do, and I, I keep messing this up by picking up other spacebar items and not thinking about the repercussions. Um, we want to grab Red Candle, and then like, as ridiculous as this might sound, my current perspective is, I don't need to fight enemies except for bosses. <laughs> just keep mashing teleport until you get to the boss fight, the item room, and the shop for zero cost, I might add. And then... Uh, you know, probably end up a little light on consumables, it's fair to say, but we're also spending very few. So you grab this, and you just get the heck out of town. Don't want that, don't want that. Definitely want to be here. Get the heck out. Okay, we're, so we're seeing all there is to see. Can you only teleport to a room you've been to before? No, absolutely not, right? There's going to be a lot of flashes on the screen, so I would prepare yourself for some uh, annoyance in that department. I think it's fair to say, but wow, insulting. Balls of steel. Not too terrible, but you know, even one rate of fire down is kind of a bummer. Anyway, this is a good run, and you know, it, it always amazes me. The, the run that really like brought this home for me was when we had pause button and an orbital, and all of a sudden like we were unkillable despite the fact that the run was also kind of garbage. Really brought it uh, home for me. Where did that fire go? <laughs> that, uh, you know, there's still meat to be eaten in, in Isaac, you know? It's like you're eating a lobster tail. Oh, but it'll remove... We gotta try it. It'll mess with Aura, but I think it's okay. It's like you've eaten half of the lobster tail. And you think there's no meat in there, and then you get the tiny little fork in there, and all of a sudden you realize, wait a minute, there's a lot of meat left in here. You know, I, I missed a whole little corner in this claw that could have provided me with, you know, some more delicious protein. You might say, NL, not everybody, you know, has the source of income that allows you to eat lobster on a regular basis. So I'm going to be honest with you, I don't eat lobster on a regular basis. I love it. It's a, it's a fantastic seafood. I like all seafood. I'm on a seafood diet, actually. I'm not sure if you've ever heard this one. I see food. I eat it. Ha <laughs> ha! But I, I just can't justify. I think even if I was making, you know, that low gang money, I can't justify lobster when there's a pasta entree on the menu that's like a third of the price. Anytime I look at a menu and it says something is market price, I'm like, I don't think so. John Nash. I want something with a fixed price. Because I don't want to be beholden to the free market, okay? I want some assurance that, you know, when I when the meal comes out, I'm going to be able to cover it. I don't want that variance. Dude, we're getting so lucky with these deals right here. Yo. So, I think, uh, don't take the knife. Because I actually, I think with euthanasia... It's actually bad to take the knife here. I know we don't need to do this, but for timing's sake, I will. Like, I think we're better off uh, not taking it and instead enjoying the, the fruits of our labor here. And this just goes to show you, you know, this is a, a, a trinket that I've looked at many times in the past and I, I've thought is horrendous. And I think it is, like, pretty terrible most of the time. Wow, just dodge right into it. But in our present situation, it's uh, a stellar addition to the to the marketplace here. Market price. I don't I'm being real with you. I don't know if I've ever ordered something that's market price. 
It just, it, it would feel wrong. Can you ask, th th I'm, this is a real question, I swear to you. Can you ask what market price is when you order something? Can you be like, hey, how's the, <laughs> can you show me the, the TSX uh, index fund for lobster today and tell me how much I'm going to be paying for this? Even if they put on the menu, lobster was exorbitant. You know, it's a $40 lobster or something like that. I'd be much more inclined to order it than to roll the dice on this market price business. That's all I'm saying, okay? And plus, isn't like everything market price? I mean, we live in a capitalist society. I don't know anything about economics. Is the market completely free? No, you know, there's, you know, regulations and... Oh, no, we gulped our trinket. <laughs> Other... You know, pressures and stuff like that in order to make sure that we don't all die in airplane crashes, you know, just to get a $4 fare. But, I did, you know, I kind of think that the halibut is market price as well. You'll see if the market will bear it. When you're charging $14 for a one-piece fish and chips, I say, you know what, that market price, I'm not going to support it. So the good thing about having gulp the trinket is that we've got perma-teleport. Which is, you know, is cool. The bad thing is that we can't use Red Candle for anything but teleporting. Which is less cool. But even still, this is almost like... I, I hope you take me at my word uh, that I'm not rushing through this run. I'm just enjoying the novelty of where we're at right here. Hey, hey, thank you. But we're still in, like, speedrun territory accidentally. He got me with a change-up on that one. I have a question for you. It's another restaurant-based question. When you go to a restaurant, let's say they got something called the house specialty. You know, anytime you go to a sushi place here, I'm assuming anywhere, but I can only speak from, you know, experience. Um, they always have something called, like, a house roll. And so this is a uh, crispy salmon skin and yam tempura. Yo, though. Um, sack of sacks is amazing. And, of course, I'm not against Tammy's head, except for the fact that it wouldn't do anything for us here. Oh, that was my bad. <laughs> anyway, when you see the house special, house sandwich, house sauce, you know, house soup, are you more likely to get it or less likely to get it? Maybe this speaks to the kind of person I am. You know, I watched a lot of Kitchen Nightmares during my formative years. When I see a house special, all I can picture is Gordon Ramsay being like, Hey, you know, gravy's really cheap this month. Let's do a let's do a special where we sell a bunch of gravy, you know? I don't know why, I don't... I'm not against gravy. Don't take this as part of, like, my anti-gravy agenda. I'm just saying. I'm like, is this the house special because it's what you're proudest of? Or is this the house special... Because it's like, it's got the best margin, so you want to encourage people to buy it. I'm not against paying, you know, the, the restaurant their just desserts, but... I don't know, it's just... I'm not sure if I trust it. If I see that it's like... You know, the world famous Cheddar Bay Biscuit. I'm in. Give me some of those CBDs. Probably too many. It's like a half a stick of butter in each one. But you're eating out, so it doesn't count. Everybody knows that. But if it's like, this is the house soup, and it's just like a Campbell's minestrone from a can, I'm like, I, he thinks the Arby's doth protest too much. Mm. No. I mean, Dark Prince's crown is actually... Wasn't it good for us there, because we have one HP? Or does it have to be, like, literally spirit hearts are relevant as well? I know it didn't last, by the way. I wish it had. It's the most, like, unexpectedly powerful trinket and spacebar item combination I've ever had. It would be garbage. Um, you know what? It would be garbage if uh, our existing, like, statistical prowess on this run wasn't up there. But because it is, like, we're actually totally set. Like, I really should probably be fighting. Yo, nine lives. Thank you so much. But it's hard to say no to a run like this, you know, where you're you're doing good work. It's a second seat. No, it's a double key room. So I'm glad I didn't spend two keys to get into that garbage room. 
What floor are we on? Depths 2? Depths 2! Oh my god, we're like crushing it here. I apologize for the screen flash. Just know this isn't what Isaac is like most of the time. It's like literally the only time in my life I've ever experienced this run. And I'm milking it for all it's worth. Out of novelty's sake. I do... I just, every... I mean, we haven't had the most amazing, like, item rooms. And we haven't had the most amazing shops. But, dude, we've gotten some pretty killer stuff. Like, tarot cloth is an incredible item. I don't really want to, like, use Diplopia. First off, we're guaranteed to teleport if we do. So I think we'll just leave. I'm super happy with Alges, by the way. Like, if we wanted to, we could fight uh, for our right to party, and we could fight Boss Rush as well. But, of course, as you might expect, my, my general thinking right now is, like, let's just go to Boss Rush, which is essentially guaranteed, unless we take eight minutes to finish this floor somehow, um, and then teleport the heck out of there, because this is like a dream come true. If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. Any room you'd like to, go to it. Wanna boss a rush? There's nothing to... You know, watching Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory as a as an adult has very different connotations from watching it as a child. And maybe I'm like muddying the waters here, I'm being overly cynical. I love the movie, and I have like a sincere soft spot for the book. I made I read so much Rolled Darl. We'll take this. As a child, like you you wouldn't even believe it. The witches, James and the Giant Peach, Boy, Matilda, just a stead, the BFG, I read them all, multiple times, you know, it was a pre-smartphone era, I was reading books instead of checking my textual messages, I even read the, the sequel, to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where they go into space, and they meet the aliens, the vermicious canids, and then the grandparents start aging in reverse so much that they go to the literal minus realm. Like, I, I was all about that stuff. So, trust me when I say, it's not like I'm trying to take down the, you know, the mythos of Willy Wonka. It's more like... Like, this dude is built like a child's idea of a dream workplace slash residence but he's like 45 years old so it's kind of i don't know dude maybe again this is me being negative there's a little bit of like a peter pan syndrome sort of thing going on there i feel or i kind of like has anybody ever asked willie if he's okay like i get that that's you know sort of covered in the movie to some extent you know he's no! Was it worth it for a spirit heart? Probably not. Get me out of here. I know we got sack of sacks. Give me some batteries, dude. Take me away. Did we kill one of those? How? I didn't know you could do that, actually. This is where I want to be anyway, so grab that. Grab this. Betrayal. Not even close to being worth it. Get the heck out of town. AKA sit yourself. I mean, like, let me put it this way. If I hadn't seen, like, a friend of mine from college for 20 years, and I go over to their house, and they got a chocolate river, I'm gonna be like, dude, this is really cool. Like, you've done so well for yourself in life, and that's amazing. But are you okay? Because it's not a normal adult thing to get a chocolate river, okay? And y if you think that that's because, you know, as you grow as an adult, you lose that magic, it's... It's not, really. It's, it's like, as you grow an adult... You start to live your life in, in like the real world. And you're like, the maintenance cost on a chocolate river is worth like not even close to being a, an equitable exchange. You're like, I don't even, what happens if you get a fly in your chocolate river? Like, the health department is going to shut down your house. Or you're going to live in a fly free environment. It just doesn't make sense. Beyond that, you know, I don't think you should have, as an adult, access 
at the ready to that much chocolate. Like, it just seems like it would enable bad habits, is what I'm trying to get across here. Maybe you've got more willpower than me. If so, though, you know, why have you got a chocolate river in your house? You know, this is what I'm saying. I know you're saying it's not his house, it's a candy factory. Well, it is his house, because he lives there. You're telling me Willy Wonka leaves the chocolate factory and then goes to, a, like, a house next to Charlie Buckets at night? I don't think so. You know, I would I would be concerned. If I went over to a friend's house and they were like, check it out, I got an indoor pool, I would be like, oh, I see you. You're balling. More power to you. I don't want to fight Hush. Like, I know this run's going very fast here, but there's just... Our run is great, but I don't... You know, our strengths are not related to the, you know, the strengths that you would require to defeat Hush here. So I, I would prefer not to if you, if you catch my drift. Although I suppose we could have fought Hush and used our Algae's Rune because we have Tarot Cloth, which we've done nothing with, but no big deal. If I went over to the house, they had like a like a billiards room or a bowling alley. I'd be like, "You're you're balling! Congratulations!" Answers. If I went over to their house and they had um, an army of like. Alien servants working for them. Singing songs about the demise of, of some children that are kind of self-righteous. I'd be like, what went wrong, dude? Like, man, that breakup really messed you up, huh, Willy? Like, you're still you're still holding the torch over that. It's the other thing is that Willy Wonka, you know, he, he gets off on, like, Testing to see if these kids are pure enough to run his freaking business that obviously is exploiting, you know, a, an underpaid workforce. It's like you ever see like a 40 year old make fun of a 12 year old? It's kind of a. You're punching downwards. It makes the 40 year old look worse, you know? Hey, sorry, 12 year old girl, but you're greedy, so, you know, off to be sorted as a bad egg. It's kind of a. You know, don't you have better things to do to occupy yourself with in your life? Or is that, that's like what your life is now, Willy? That's a sad story, honestly. All I'm trying to say is just like as an adult. I look at Willy Wonka and I go, I don't know, dude. It seems like you got problems. Like, I wouldn't want my kid to go to that chocolate factory. I get that it's a different era, you know? I mean, like, the buckets were eating cabbage stew for dinner every single night, like one florid of broccoli and a pot of hot water divided among eight grandparents. You know, it's a special thing for them, and, you know, Charlie, he did a great thing, you know? It was his grandfather who was a real jerk, for the most part. Grandpa Joe was like, hey, let's mess around in the chocolate factory, almost cost him a chance to be gifted a great business. Charlie's innocent, dude. No, you are an idiot. <laughs> I am a dumb fool. Um, basically, I was like, oh, let's hit it with some red candle to get the kill. Smart smart play. Very smart play at the end of that. Red candle. We got 12 different things going on here. Yeah, just give me that algae. Let me out. This is my punishment now. Yo, but Aura has come through in the clutch for us. Look at that. We're gonna we're gonna finish this run off. This was a, an extremely strange but also very fun run. I had a very good time, but I am I am not gonna lie to you. I'm looking forward to probably a little bit more of a conventional run coming right up. Something a little bit more, uh, you know, something where you actually have to kill enemies. This is like a 20 minute to blue baby run, which is extremely fast. But anyway. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.